Pot Orange MCM vests. All, All right, Cavario, we want to talk about um, one of the substances that has had periods of making a lot of money in some cities that never stopped. Very destructive, um, kind of like some of the stuff that's hitting the streets now, but water, dust, love, call it different things in different cities. Take us, boat, take us back to sort of late 70s Harlem where weren't kids like as that that young group of guys who had been hustling maybe H on the street. Uh, was there a period of like selling nickels of, of, of dust on the street? Was that a big thing or what? Nickels? Or whatever, some amount. Yeah. I never saw nickels. For How did that part, game work? Me, for the most part, it was it was uh it was twenties. And that was really that started really in the late seventies, early eighties. The twenty dollar bags. Before that, twenty five, thirty. And now in the West they would be sold already in a cigarette or joint, or that was not what was going on in Harlem. In Harlem, it would be a bag in like uh, a, a colored vanilla bag, right? Well, envelope, but in, it would be inside. That would be the, 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 the dust would be inside of a bag or plastic bag inside of that bag because it would be wet. It would be dripping with you know with the phenocycladine, PCP. And what would it be on? Like mint leaves? Be on mint leaves. So, and how many joints would you roll? Like, how many people can get high how many times off of 25? Of, uh, probably, you probably get about three joints back then because the, 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 the joints were the width of a lollipop stick. Oh, skinny. Yeah, super skinny. Did and, you ever... Like three, you know, three cats, four cats might smoke that if it's some real crazy. Did you ever, ever try it once even? Hell to no. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Did, you, know, you know, there was a reason that I didn't. Which was? Um, I had an older cousin named Bruce, right? Oh, I, I got a copus. Um, and um, he was, for the most part, it's pretty square. And um, at some point, he started smoking dust, unbeknownst to me and my mother, whatever. So there was this big snowstorm in New York. And um, there were like maybe four or five days where... Nah, nah, there was like two weeks where people couldn't find their cars. That's how much snow it was. So, during the period where people couldn't find their cars, my mother uh, told them to take me and my friend Jose to the movies, 42nd Street. And we lived on a concrete. Like every year, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Like frequent, like multiple times. Mm -hmm. So, um, we um, we left out the, out the apartment in the Bronx, and we were supposed to get in the cab and go down to Times Square. But he decided to walk us from 164th and Grand Concourse to 123rd Street and 7th Avenue. Now, with it, snow. Yeah, with the, yeah. Yeah, it was shoveled up out the, sh you know, whatever, but it's still sh like people's cars was vanished like for weeks. So, you know, we walking, it's freezing. I don't, I got on British walkers and shit. You know what I mean? But we hanging out with my big cousin and shit. But she done gave him cab fare and yeah, all that. all that. But he got to save the bag. He got to save the money for his bag. We don't know this, though. So we walked on 23rd, 7th Avenue, a notorious Angel Dust location in New York. Historical. Right? I think they had Red Devil over there back in the days. Cats made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars over there on that on that way. In what street? Where was that at? On 23rd, 7th. Yeah, on the uptown side of Seventh Avenue, and uh, my private school was right across the street on 122nd and Seventh. Who were the customers? Um, everybody. So was that was the thing about Angel Dust? Girls, guys, young, not so young, middle aged. You know, because when it first touched down, it was um, it was really something that the old heads like Nikki in them did. You know, cats who had a lot of money, like a cocaine, you know, old, old, old. Ex heroin addicts like Nikki Barnes and all of them, they was all ex dope fiends. So they had a different type of resistance to that shit. 
they were smoking that shit. A lot of young bros had, was smoking that shit. And that's how a lot of young dudes started smoking it because the young bros was fucking with the old heads. The old heads had them freaking off on it. So the young bros would go with the money that they got from the old heads from freaking off and they go get with the young dudes and they go turn the young dudes out on the shit. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of cats smoking dust. So we get to 123rd Street, right? And my cousin walks us into this building. So we step into the, off the sidewalk into the first vestibule and there's a door, another door right there. Uh, uh, him and the guy go inside that door. Me and my cousin, me and my, my man is standing there. He's like 11 years old. He comes back out a few minutes later and him and his man stand there. They take out a lollipop size, you know, joint and he lights it. He takes two hits. My cousin, he passes to my cousin. My cousin takes two hits. And when they smoke dust, they smoke like this, they go. And I guess because the fucking joint is like a like a martini stroke and he takes two hits and he goes what's this dust before he before he hit he said what's this dust now you didn't walk to 123rd street in 7th avenue so he know it you know goddamn well it's dust but this is the thing had he not said that i would never have known that it was dust as opposed to weed right so me and my man is like, oh, he's smoking weed, he's smoking weed, you know. And we step outside. He takes the two hits, turns around, opens the door, steps outside. As soon as he steps outside, he just lo he's gone. He steps outside, it's like this. Gone. Just gone. Just like that. So we don't know what the fuck is going on. So we walk to the corner. You're 11. 11. We walk to the corner, got my Yankee fitted on and shit, you know, man, my British walkers and shit, you know. I probably had on my sheepskin or bomb or something like that. Probably my sheepskin because it was fucking freezing. So, we standing there, stop a cab. While we're standing there, waiting for the cab, these two big transvestites that had to be about 6'4", in, 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 in like, heels and shit they come up to the corner and they got their arms over each other's shoulders and they they you know they they dust it they go to step off the off the curb and completely they step off the sidewalk and completely miss the ground and they are arm over shoulder on each person so they both pull each other to the ground slam into the goddamn floor face first and get up it started laughing like nothing did did what was i mean so we all hear about the bad you know trips and all that but people must have liked like what was it described what was the enjoyable part described as like well if it was good what did it make you feel like well before i answer that let me let me finish this we stop the cab we get in the cab i get in cousin gets in my man gets in the guy says we going my cousin goes, downtown. He goes, where downtown? He goes, downtown. He goes, hey man, you already downtown. Where you wanna go? He goes, tell me downtown. <laughs> right? So he's like, man, get I tried to you motherfucker, get the fuck out of my motherfucking cab. So I start pushing him. I say, yo, let's get get the fuck out the cab for this man, pull out a pistol or something like that. This gypsy cab is back in, you know what I mean? Is it some guy? Nah, you know Just some guy. Like, get the fuck out of this cab. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we get out, and we stand in there, and all of a sudden this nigga, he can't move his feet. His feet are stuck to the floor. <laughs> he's, he's doing this shit. And he's grabbing for us. He's doing this and grabbing. And we took the fuck off, man. Ran down to my block, went into my aunt's house, called my mother. Because I had that exposure to dust, that experience, that's why I never fucked with it. Because I saw that. And Initially, I knew him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm named after this motherfucker. And he was regular. His name was Bruce. He wasn't a lunatic. You know I mean? Right, exactly. So I knew, you know, that this was not some shit I should be fucking with. What what did what, people what, like what, about what, it? What they liked about it. Um A lot of them said it made them feel super. It made them feel uninhibited, like you know, powerful, uh, unafraid of anything, detached them, it took them somewhere else, you know? So it's escape. 
Kind of like, like a heroin with that. Did it have euphoria? It did it have a euphoria? Yeah. Or was it addictive? Yeah, it's addictive. Uh, it, it did. It did have a euphoria, but for the most part, you just like you bugged out. You know what I mean? For the most part, like I, I, I seen all type of shit. I, I saw. Mitch, but you didn't always bug Mitch out. Mitch. I mean, but you didn't always bug out. No, you know what? I, my mother had a boyfriend who used to smoke that shit and could talk to you and. But you would never fucking know it. Was he uh, was, a whole fucking joke? But he was probably a wild character. Oh, he was a. My mother ain't like nothing but fucking killers. He was a stone cold. Tell us your Mitch Blood Green story. Did, so, were you selling dust? No, I did it for a second. You know what I didn't like about it? It was too loud. Oh, the customers, it was too. No, no, it itself. Oh, smell. Yes, it was way too loud. So you put this shit in a glass jar. You, you know, you take it, you get the juice, the water. You, you, you get the mint leaves, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you do your mix, you shake it up, you know what I mean? You, 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 you put it in a jar to you rate it bag or whatever, then you put it in the refrigerator. It's in a jar sealed in a mason jar in the refrigerator. You take that shell of the refrigerator, everything smells like motherfucking uh, uh, PCP. Right? And it was very, it's toxic. Then you get, right, and then you get in a goddamn cab trying to take it, you know, where you got to go. Dead of winter, you got the windows down. Because in the back, if you fuck around sitting in that back seat, by the time you got that motherfucker, you don't know where you going. <laughs> He's so fucked up. And but now it had a big markup, right? Like yes. a turn, like because I was why I got some footage, and they're talking about you know buying a gallon for two grand and making forty thousand if yes. you broke it down to die yes. or whatever. Yes. yes. So it get it got to a point. I remember at one point uh, they was talking about. In New York, anyway, it's talking about 40, 40,000 for a gallon, some shit. Oh, because like I in L, I was trying to think if you were in six months, you get a million. Yeah, the L.A. gangs like they was making them and selling them for. I think it might cost them two thousand in chemicals, so they could sell it for ten and make five times their money, and then you still gonna get forty, and then them people gonna break it down to the street and probably make another. Eight times. Yeah, there's a lot of money. Oh, it's there's like the most markup. Millions off that shit. Oh, that's how come that's something we never. One dude who's he, he, he fucked around developed Parkinson's. We like. never hear too much. Like if you look through the old newspaper, you'll see it here and there, and it pops up. I saw a case in '01 in Chicago. Like it's around. Tell us about your buddy that got the Parkinson's. So this was a cat that um hustled with us. He was the associate of our family. And um, he had a he had a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of movement with that with that water, right? He's got a lot of money with him. And I used to see him sometime. We'd be in the club, we'd be in the in the spot or whatever in Harlem, and his hands would be shaking. And I was like, "Yo, bro, this is like 1990." So he had been maybe doing it 10, 12 years. Probably been doing it about 10 years, yeah. All right? So I was, was like, he a user? Oh, not bro, to your knowledge. Nah, uh -uh. He drank a little. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, bro, like, you need to... He, he, this nigga wasn't wearing masks or nothing, bro. So even when you're shifting heroin, you need to. So the PCP Absolutely. even more so. So when he went, when he ended up going to prison, when he ended up going to prison, um, he, by the time he got into prison, he, he, he had developed Parkinson's. Parkinson's? At what age? Probably about 40. <sighs> so I'd be eight years, seven years deep with Parkinson's. Wow. What, what, In prison. What was his out, like... I mean, he, he, I did see him again outside coming out. He came out of prison, whatever, whatever. But he was so, he had quirks back then that if you just, you know, if, if you just around him in those kind of like club, you know, after hours type situation, you just figured, you know, that's his club mode. You know, he had a few drinks. Yeah. He feeling himself, whatever, whatever. But when I saw him after the fact. He um, wasn't never right. I was like, no, he was never right. He was never right. He was he was fucked up. He was really fucked up the whole time. Damn. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, good dude. But he was. He was and what's the last you knew of him? Um, nothing. Not, you know, just around. He didn't seem that functional when I seen him. When was it? When when was that? that? Was like two thousand. Nah, 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 nah. That was like two thousand fifteen. Oh, not long ago. He didn't seem. And I ain't seen him since. And he, he was like, like, couldn't hold a job, probably. I mean, he, he, he was repeating himself, but he used to do that back in the days, and we didn't, I didn't think about it. But he was repeating himself now, like, right behind oh, each other. Wow. You know I mean? 
So, That's yeah. disturbing. Now, yeah. did you? I, 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 what was your experience selling it? And tell us about the Mitch Blood Green. Um, my experience selling it was, it made a lot of money really quickly. But it was, if you're a person who I was used to selling cocaine, heroin, you know what I mean? Things you could conceal, uh, things that you could prevent from being smelled. Oh, there was like nothing. Oh, so you it was could like do they... to prevent good juice. You cannot prevent that shit from being smelled. Which Especially means you're inhaling the fumes. Yeah, when you when you put that shit on, on the mint leaves, it, it, it just, that, you know how that mint is. That's got a strong enough smell. Man, man, listen, listen. You know, that shit is so, it's so bizarre, bro. Like, how quickly you can blow a block up with that shit. Really? Yeah, you can come out of nowhere. For real, for real, dust is so crazy that if, if we stood here three nights in a row and two or three people who smoked dust came through and got some good dust from us, within four days, five days, you'll have 50, 60 motherfuckers riding through here. Looking for that trying, dust. Trying to, trying to buy that dust. Ooh. Dust is still like that. And where is the cities that it's, it's still in New York? Yeah, it's still in New York. Certain, you ain't got to say the where, but certain areas? Yeah, it's still in New York, certain areas. But is it certain... It's like, because I never kept the across Spanish it. Mostly uh, on the um, Spanish size. Mostly in Harlem. So, but it's certain blocks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sure. what's the other big cities? L.A. still? Um, L.A. L.A. Uh, who else they, were they? Chicago they, a little bit. Yeah, Chicago for sure. Philly? Philly for sure. Not Philly in Baltimore, sure. though. Um, I never really heard of but it But D.C. Like was that. bad. But D.C. is definitely bad. And you said that was one of the reasons you didn't want to hustle down there. Yeah, man, because motherfuckers are so zoned out. And everybody was like, these were, first of all, they were adolescents. They were adolescents, right? They were immature, out of control, you know, kids from mostly country homes. And then they were smoking angel dust. So you think they contributed to DC's being the murder capital? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. So they were bad. That was a heavy use city. Yes, hell yeah, man. Niggas be boating the fuck up. They don't know what they're doing. I got I had some homies out there. I got a homie still who who claims he ain't fucking around. But I know you fucking around, nigga. You know what I mean? But um, the things that he has done. <laughs> my God, man. This motherfucker had a beautiful, big-ass suburban. Beautiful joint. And he riding down the highway in Maryland. And he decides that he wants to sit on the window seat. The, the, on, the, on the window, like in the driver's side yeah. window. He wants to sit on that and drive down the highway. Nothing happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crashed or something? Yeah, he crashed that shit up. He crashed that shit up. Wow. Floor. But it's just like, he told me he did this. I was like, yo, bro. And he still goes back to doing Why it. Why would you do that? That shit is seriously addictive. Oh, so it's, it, addictive. it's addictive. Let me tell you, I had a cousin, an, another cousin named Skippy. <laughs> Skippy, uh... He stayed with us a little while in the Bronx, right? My mother loved Skippy the Dell. Skippy was smoking that shit, but we didn't know that. So, Skippy had gone and taken a shower. When he walked back from my mother's room, because my mother's bathroom had the shower, the other bathroom had just a tub. So, when he walked out, he walked, you know, down the hall and walked into my room, he had feet print you know from the his feet being wet on the wood floor the next day his feet print were still in the wood what does that mean it was the fucking the, 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 the chemicals? chemicals the chemicals coming out of his the bottom of his oh fucking my feet. god and it had fucking permeated into the fucking wood that sounds horrible bro bro that shit is the worst I think that's one of the worst drugs ever, if not the worst. I, I know meth is fucking people up and whatever else they're doing with that shit that's supposed to be meth. Now, I, I think PCP is worse. PCP is a nefarious drug. I know, I was just talking to somebody about this, or a cousin of mine I was just talking to. My, shout out to Ray. <laughs> Ray used to smoke that shit back in the days. And um, Ray was talking about, you know, how it would have him, I'm talking about a high school kid. They would have him like hunt down whoever had it, like whoever was the dust man, find out where they live, go to their house, knock on their door and before he go to school, 
and, and every like, day. Yo, if you, no, if you don't, I don't know the days he ain't have. He's like, yo, if you don't get, if you don't serve me right now, nigga, I'm gonna tell everybody where you at. I'm gonna, you have all these people coming to buy dust from you at your door. So this motherfucking shit, man. We were talking about how um, I knew a guy. He knew a guy as well who had a similar experience. I knew a guy who who smoked dust one time. Smoked it one time. Never spoke again. Never spoke? Never spoke again. Sp smoked it one time. Never talked again. Now, I hadn't seen him since 1982, three, something like that. No, no, no. This happened in 1982. I hadn't seen him since maybe the early 90s. He still wasn't talking. So, give me an idea. Oh. Like, some people's reaction to that, to that chemical, to those chemicals, um, some people's That's scary. brain chemistry with that shit, it don't mix, man. It don't mix. Mitch Green. This is when I was hustling in the Bronx. Um, well, I was hustling Bronx for a very long time. Um, this was uh, Bavaria. Like 19. <laughs> this is like 1989. I had to be like 1989. Yeah, that was just um, a little, his little 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, a little 19, 1988, 89, right? So I was on 65th and Walton. Everybody know 65th and Walton, the Bronx, right? Um, so you're like 21? Is, um, no. Uh, yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm 20 to 21. Oh, yeah, he's my yeah, baby. Right? You're my guy. So, so when... Um, but you were experienced. You ate, you've been selling drugs for damn near a decade. That, at yeah, point. at that point. Yeah, at that point, I've been in the street uh, since 1980. You urchin, you. you know I mean? so, yeah, true street urchin. So, um. Dog, it's, it's like you know, Michigan. Yeah, it's cold out the wall, but man. Uh, I mean, it's bugged because I don't have no sleeves, but with this hoodie up, I'm not cold. All right. So, Mitch Green came up to 65th. And oh, oh I, for younger people. Who's Mitch Green? Why was he famous? Oh, Mitch Green is uh, a former boxer who um, was made famous when he got his ass kicked by Mike Tyson outside Dapper Dan's. But they had a real boxing match, too. They did. They did. They did. They did have a real boxing match. Uh, he didn't win. And he was a gang kind of leader or something. Yeah, he was a gang. He was a gang cat, you know, but he was a wild dust head nigga. He was man. a rough guy. Yeah, though. he was a wild, wild dude. Like, like a you Bronx know, this, this guy. Is the thing, though. This is the thing, though, bro. Like, this is my thing. If you smoke a mind altering or use a mind altering drug, a drug that makes you act outside of your uh, normal self. And you do things under that uh, uh, under that influence. That to me don't make you no real wild motherfucker. It makes you a person who's fucked up on drugs yeah. and is doing things because you fucked up on drugs. Was he was what? Did you were ever around him when he wasn't on dust? Um, or you only knew him from the dust block? I only knew him from coming to the dust block. Okay, so right? you had this so, dust block for a brief time. Yeah, no, I was I was selling crack. Oh, but, but it, it's just an infamous dust block. Oh, okay. One sixty fifth in Walton. Is an infamous dust block from from like the late seventies. You know oh. what I mean? G man. When do you crew, think that lasted? G man crew used to used to had that popping. You know. When did that last till? Um, nineties. It it definitely lasted till nineties because I left in eighty nine and I gave my building to um my man Jama. He was a Jamaican cat that I fucked with hard out there. There's a lot of Jamaican cats out there. Um and um. Shout out to Salman Bigger. Um, and so when uh, this this guy comes around, um, there's a, a, my, my man and them, uh, um, a, a squirrel, and um, they had a, a new pack, a new dust pack. And um, they was doing 10, I think they was doing $10 bags or whatever, though. So they, they get like one joint, like one little joint or whatever. So he came through, you know, he come through, he popped shit, you know, he, he talk, you know, your shit better be something, nigga. Better not be no bullshit. I'll come back and knock y'all the fuck out. You know, shit like that, right? This is how Mitch gets down. <laughs> so, Mitch came, cop some shit, right? He always cop about 10 bags or some dumb shit like that. So, he cop some shit. 
and he pops some shit and then he leaves. He come back about 15 minutes later and he is raving about how whack this shit is. This shit whack is a motherfucker. This shit so fucking whack. I don't feel shit out this motherfucker. It's like it's winter time. This nigga got no jacket. So he clearly right. chilling. <laughs> he feeling it. And there's a huge at the bottom, like off the Grand Concourse of 65th Street, come down to Walton Avenue. And there's a huge puddle. A huge, huge Slush. puddle from the curb Slush. all the way out to like the, the middle of the intersection. Huge, huge fucking puddle. Giant puddle, bro. This motherfucker is raging and going off and taking off more stuff as he's raging. And he's taking off more stuff as he's raging. Now, while he's walking up, while he's doing this, people are walking up going, what the fuck is he on? My man Squirrel's like, that's my shit. That's my shit, nigga. Right down the block right there. That's oh, wow. Uh, and he on my shit. Down there talking about, this ain't shit. Don't buy that shit. It ain't shit going off. Take his clothes off. So he gets his clothes off. Wow. And jumps in this motherfucking water. So... If you ever talk to one answer, like, what do they think you're doing? Or they don't know, no telling. Like, they, what is it they think they, you're doing? Bro, like, uh, uh, I've had conversations with them, right? Because some of these was my close friends. I've had conversations with them. I had one motherfucker tell me, because I, like, I was like, yo, why did it take you so long to step Because that don't sound me? fun. Bro, it's, it's like some, it's like some, I need to escape my reality shit, like, hardcore. I need to escape my reality. Pleasure outside, like anything can. Bruh, bruh. This motherfucker was standing at this curb for like 15 minutes trying to get up this curb. He said every time he was a step up the curb, the curb would get big. It would, he said, it would shoot up to like, he had to look up to it. So every every few minutes, he was going like this. He was going, he'd go like this and he'd go, (sighs) right? And I was like, yo, bro, what the fuck was going on with you? And he said, yo, every time I went to step on it, the shit went. I said, you literally saw it go up like that? He said, yeah. I said, bro, why, why would you want to use some shit like that? And and how you how you think, like, I, I was like, I don't know what you motherfuckers is really built like. Because y'all so dusty that I don't know whether it's you or this fucking And they was pretty. So the people was using it, it was. Because I always thought. It was like some once in a because it was so extreme once in a while. But if you were doing it, you were doing it. Motherfuckers move that shit every day. Wow. Every people have day. told me that about people in L.A. Wow. Every day. Every day. They're addicted. They're addicted. They have to. They, they, they smoke that shit every day. So there's day. a withdrawal or some some sort? or they just, Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a withdrawal. It's funny, or they just really, like, or they just, I psycho, really heard, or I so really psychologically heard. addicted like cocaine. Like Probably. a crack, like a crack. Probably, but there's but there's so much shit in that concoction. Oh, ain't no telling. That there's no telling what it is that you might be fucking. Because this is to. this is like this is like uh, you know the, the 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 I guess just to say it in a jokey term, like the black man's meth. Some guy, some black guy's right. in a lab, and who ain't no scientist, who done got some chemicals from some. Chinese shady company somewhere is following some recipe they got in prison. Yep. Basically. Yep. Shit. Yep. It's it's. it's or you done came to L.A. and went to Cap because Captain was known for the water. Yeah. For the water, man. I, I, I've I've said this, uh, you know, early on in this in this interaction, but it was known, and I think they still pretty much subscribe to this idea. If you sell that shit for six months, you definitely be a millionaire. But if you get jammed with it, you, you, they'll try to look, L your ass out. Oh, so they, they, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. They get jammed with some dust, man. They try to give you fucking ass life. Like on some manufacturing shit. Yeah. Yeah, that shit is dangerous. It's dangerous as fuck. And to close on us, even while this has been serious and cyber, but a few last, but, uh, and we did a long. I got, an, I got, a, I got another one. Okay. Another dust story. Okay. Now, this one is real crazy. This is one of the earlier ones. So there was a, uh, I know a lot of dudes who smoked a lot of dust, bro. And they just basically walked down, walked around like the walking dead, like lumbering around like that all fucking day long. Wow. You know, from one, from one fun. dust spot to another. Yeah. Like for real, for real. Um, I think a lot of people with mental health, you know, oh. like predispositions for like different. Uh, yeah, kind of that, that makes sense. You know, uh, 
I think they're of especially sister. That makes sense. Yeah. So, um, this there was this one cat who smoked a lot of fucking dust, man. A lot of dust. So, um, one day he falls out. And I have seen somebody break handcuffs too. Uh, he used to be the super of, of my building on 65th Street in Walton Avenue in Panama. Panama got, got dusted up and uh, got butt ass naked and the police tried, it was summertime. The police tried to grab him up and they, they, they couldn't get a hold of him because he, he was sweating like a wild man and he just kept slipping off of him and he was real strong, Panamanian woman. Yeah. And, and uh, he was he was flipping their asses left and right, whatever, whatever, and with the handcuffs on. And then, then pop the motherfucking handcuffs with it. And when I spoke to him about it later on, he didn't really remember it. Not really. He didn't really remember. It. He more so was just. He like, knew he got arrested. He got arrested, and I wasn't the first person to say, "Yo, you was." You know. But he didn't remember the events. He, he really remembered the shit. He really remembered shit. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why. I think they have a different recall of the experience after the fact than the actual experience. Mm. You know, and I think that's what they're going after. Like, so oh, it don't man, sound. Yeah, it don't. Right. They, they remember it better than it was. Right. All right, so getting back to the other guy, this motherfucker smoked a lot of dust, a lot, a lot of dust, right? You could smell it coming out, just come out of his pores. And they were they able to work or you don't know all that? I mean, some people were. It's like dope fees. Some people were. Were there people, if 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 you were, sound like if you were doing it, you couldn't be selling it because you were too out of it. People did. I mean, they, off the but, clock. You weren't. Yeah, pe people people did, but you, like, so I told you, some people could smoke that shit and it don't do nothing. Oh. My little boyfriend, he could smoke that shit. And it, it. It did what it did, but it did not take them out of themselves. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Um, or were they just able to, like... Now, he could talk and be have a conversation. Well, could you... Was it know. people who knew how to control the dope in some of them other people? Like, it's like... I mean, shit. It's like there's between... Okay, you could take two Percocets and be high and be functional, and then some other people want to slam a syringe and pass out. Right. Or was it very unpredictable where... You could take a puff and have a good time, or you could take a puff and flip out. You really didn't seem more like that. Right. Plus, it sounds like the way the dosage units are made, you're shaking it and mint. There's a little bit of a random. Some could have double, triple the other. That's a fact. That that sounds That's plausible. Yeah. We, we we didn't really know. What, I mean, we didn't know what the fuck. We it's were. like we the had, fentanyl. We had no system. Yeah. Mean? We just we, it was a certain way that we did it, and, and it did it that generally way. worked. But generally, probably generally. some of the Sometimes bags could have been like, yo, the bag was dry, whatever. That was like that that motherfucker over there, the nigga over there pulling his own toenails out. He he had some. He he, he seemed to be enjoying himself. But he might have got you know I mean? a double strip. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Um. So you know, it was like um. The uh, uh, um, the, I wanted to tell you this though, um, something that came up in the conversation I, I was having with my cousin uh, Ray, Ray. today, okay. and Ray said that the doctor told him because he stopped, he started early, right? So he was 14, years years doing it. Yeah, and and he did it, he did it t t like for like seven years, I think he said. And he was able to graduate high school and and um, was he a productive I don't think citizen? So. I don't, I mean, you know, he, he, he you know, he, he was, was he hustling. Was he hustling? Sold drugs. But it was he because he part of the system. He didn't have to be I mean, on the ball. Yeah, I mean, no, no. You, my family was real strict. You had to be, you had to be on your, on your shit. How long would it last for? It depends. Like sometimes niggas be high for four hours, eight hours. So he could work his little drug shit <laughs> and then get high because he. I'm sure you weren't letting him be kid. high on the ship. <laughs> so he's. Ray is probably 10 years older than me, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right? Eight years at the mo at the least. And oh, so, so in 79, he's 14. 21. So he started in 73 or 4 or something. Yeah, he's like... He's like Early he's adopter. Old. Right. So, you know, um, he, was a, he was a fucking kid. By the time he stopped, it was the time where he's like, you know, he's trying to really, really give me some fucking money for real, for real. You know? But he was saying that... Um, the doctor had told him that because he'd smoked so much of it, it had saturated the uh, uh, fatty cells in his brain. Oh, so he would always get a little so bit of effect. He would get like this guy's trying this car, this guy's car doors. So he would always like he might be like I knew dudes who smoke who would smoke a joint and might have a flashback, and I knew dudes that would. 
uh, drink a beer, and they might have a flashback. Ooh. Like they drink a beer, and all of a sudden they're like, they're like "Oh wow, I'm, zombie out. I met a guy in Arizona jail that he they were selling LSD. He had a, a bottle that probably had a thousand doses, and and he they got rear-ended or something, and it spilled on his skin. And he said, "I see L like it, it, he knew." Wasn't really a trip because he knew, but he said he saw things always, and it had been years. I'll pass. Wow. I'll pass. Wow. I, I, you know, what I knew, I, I knew about myself. I knew that um, I, I had, uh, I had already had restraint issues. You know what I mean? Oh. And I knew that if I smoked something like that, and it, it made that voice in my head, you know that. Regulated oh, my ideas. Violence. You know what I mean? I I I always imagined that I would wake up strapped to some table somewhere. Some murder charge. They told my why'd you kill all those people? You know what I mean? Some shit like that. Yeah. That's why I never I never well, fought. That's good. Shit. That's good. You know what I mean? And um so the 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 doctor told Ray that, you know, that's why from time to time he'll just have a fucking flashback. Wow. And it'll be like he smoked the joint. Wow. Now did that did that slowly ever go away? Um, I believe I believe it did. Dog, don't speak in the dust. Don't come over here. Don't be messing with us. Don't come over here, bro. Do we know someone's in the car? Don't come over here, bro. Don't come Snake over here, is. bro. Don't come over here, bro. No, I don't smoke. See, he don't like, bro. Fuck, he think yeah. It's like they not in this world. Okay, I mean you don't want to. He add, might, he might you don't be add an ass whooping to your fucking. He oh, damn shit. near see, like, see that that's what drug is. That's not a that, stimulate. That to, me, that to me is definitely a, a mental condition. But it could. He's, he's probably schizophrenic. Good to see, but Sam Mike is a dust. Yeah, schizophrenic. He's still smart. They say, Captain, this house, you can knock on the door, get a damn bag. Yeah. Now what's interesting, like where Lucio and Watts, he said it's not. I mean, he don't do as we would know, but he said don't seem prevalent but he said over in captain and i've met some captain guys like this is a thing really and Captain, they're like yeah i'm gonna forget it like, yeah because they use it you know like sometimes if you're going to do like put go on a mission and put it's funny and you know ecstasy is supposed to make you so loving i remember they, that was a thing in detroit i'm sure everywhere of like in those bad environments if you was to shoot do some ecstasy to go do violence really yeah because it's just it's releasing emotions, and if you got bad, as they say, a bad spirit on you, but I yeah, people would do violence off of it. That's crazy. But inner a uh, strong chemical actor in it with our brain, each individual's personal life history. That's right. That's right. All those are factors. Yeah. It's all of those things I mean, look, contribute to a, a chemical condition. Look what alcohol, what different effects. There's happy drunks. There's evil drunks, there's fall asleep drunks, there's you don't really notice the drunk until they fall over. Like, there's people who start off fun, then get evil, then they can't talk. That's alcohol. There's people, there's people who have one drink. And you'll think they had 10. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slurring and everything. Yep. So, um. So, the, 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 the one guy smoked all this dust, right? Right. No, no, no. Oh. Ray, I was, that's my cousin I was telling you about with the uh, flashbacks and shit like yeah. that. How this shit will stick with a yeah, yeah, yeah. for years yeah. after they've stopped doing it. So, this one guy, he smoked all this dust, right? Outrageous. And was known to have a very high tolerance, so he could smoke a lot of this shit. So, um, one day he goes out. He passes out, right? Falls out. So, they call the ambulance to come and get him. Ambulance comes to get him. The guy reaches down to lift him up and put him on the gurney. And when he reaches down and puts his hands behind his shoulders, he jumps back. And people are like, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he's like, he's not on the ground. He's not on the ground. Oh, he's like levitating? The motherfucker wasn't on the ground. This shit... He had so much of this shit in him that the shit was coming out of him like a force, bro. The motherfucker wasn't on the ground, bro. Now, 
There are people who are there as well. I'm not that fucking old. So there's somebody. No, you never. Like, you don't yo. tell metaphysical. Like, no, no. The, you yo, don't yo, tell yo, metaphysical. No, no you don't me. tell metaphysical stories. Yeah. No, I. You ain't one of them. I saw a ghost type guys. Yeah. I'm telling. I'm like, yo, bro. That shit is nothing to be fucked. Or he could have been like. Who knows? Like his neck and heels could have been holding him, and his body could have been so rigid or something weird. Something weird. Something weird. I mean, they they defied. Many of the laws that we understand, bro. Wow. You know what I mean? I've seen them get hit by cars and be get straight hit by baseball bats. It was like nothing. And were they like hurt nothing, the next like day? No, no, you didn't. Yeah. But know. at the time, they, so it would be some shit that would stop another person, like, period, and they'd get right the fuck back up. So that wasn't, we used to see that in movies. That wasn't no myth. Nah, nah, bro. Those motherfuckers really go. They go. Like that's that shit is now. DC, really they were calling it love ball. Like, was oh, it a boy. sexual? No. For some people. No, I mean, I think when you say broads were freaking off, I like. Yeah, I think uh, you know it just it, Nikki it's, like it's, to it's mix it with super, cocaine. This is super in a, in, a, un- in, in oh inhibition. Un- yeah, like it, it removes all the inhibitions. You know what I mean? I wouldn't like, normally have sex. I wouldn't normally have sex with your fat nasty ass. But or or or, 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 or right exactly. <laughs> Your, your old your old pasty ass your old baggy ass I wouldn't have them, you know what I mean but that's that's how they got them young brothers back then you know what I mean like they oh, can that, Nicky said that the ba- he loved he do cocaine and PCP yep and it extended the orgasm for 10 or whatever he said in his documentary but that was his he that was speak, his shit. speaking of Nicky well we're gonna be before we get into Nicky just to end on a summer note, you lost one of your fathers, one of the men, you know. Yes, 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 yes. To my burnout, right? Yeah, you know. Um, we told it in depth just and briefly. I, I, I mean, I was talking to Reggie's, Reggie Douglas, right? I was talking to Reggie's girlfriend who uh, grew up uh, in my neighborhood, right? And she saw, she told me this recently when we were doing the um, interview. She saw, um, she saw Bernard run by her naked that day. Oh, so he might have done so. In the corner store. No, I mean, this, he, he, whatever the, it, it, I don't think it was. He was in was, Philly. No, no, no. Oh, you talking about my father. You talking about, you talking about, yeah, you talking about, no, you talking about my killed? stepfather, Tracy. Got, no, we got killed during oh, the deal. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, Tracy was one of the early pioneers of the dust thing in, in the city, in New York, right? And uh, he got put onto it by uh, um, a Jewish guy in the um, in the garment district who had a connect for it, right? A uh, Hasidic dude. And so <clears throat> he started moving to town. This is after cats had come over from Cali and had started like they would come over they'd have so much so did you know, Cali you know, seem like the first big like it, that's they, they, they're the ones who brought it over the over the, over to the, oh okay and they would come and they would rock what they had and then they gone so then people were like yo damn when you know where the Cali niggas at when they coming oh. back whenever whatever so he was one of the first guys to really bring it out you know where it's it was there like that mm. and um he went to at one point, go and see some people. I, I'm assuming also, you know, about more dust, whatever. He used to, he used to hide the, uh, he used to transport it. Uh, um, he used to get it from the port in Philly, mm. and he would transport it in fish. Oh, that was the only thing that could he'd cover the like, spout. He was acting like he was, he was fishing. He transported it inside the fish. Oh. All right. So um, he went to go do a deal, and he brought his girlfriend with him, and um, they uh, they robbed them. And then they put them in the closet in the hotel, and then they shot through the closet and, and killed them and shit. Crazy way for a guy like him to end, because he was, he was really a, a, a kind and, um, you know, like, not a violent guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, if, well, if he had to do something, he would do what he had to do, but he wasn't a person that, you know, violence was his, his forte. He wasn't into it like that. So speaking of uh, Nikki, I just want to close, and it's just so... This whole thing, and it was the cities that's most well documented in where we know it happened early, and it became this thing now all through the 80s, you know, by young teenagers selling drugs, but in 
in Harlem for sure. I don't know about Brooklyn. Harlem and Detroit, you had these early cultures in the 70s of 13, 14, 15-year-olds being put into big position in the drug game. And, you know, as an older person, I think about, like, you know, even when I was doing shady stuff like this, like, oh, it's like if you came to visit me in L.A. and I had some 16-year-old crips driving around in my port, you'd be like, hey, what are you but you got this six-year-old boy with your car. Like, what are you doing? And your what did your mother tell you about Nikki and them? She said, "Don't fuck around, um, the, around them dudes. Them dudes is faggots, man. Them dudes, them dudes is doing weird shit. You know what I mean? Like they they turning them boys, they turn them young boys out. You see all these young boys riding around in the, in these benzes. This is you know, this is eighty one, eighty two, eighty three. You know, and you see, you see these young boys riding around these benzes. They got them driving their cars, all that kind of stuff." So they fucking them boys. Don't, don't, Cause don't, be, don't be around. Don't be around those motherfuckers. Oh. This, then, this is what my mother told me. My mother knew them people for fucking ever. They yeah. all grew up together. So, this well, let's is say Nikki went in in eighty. So this might have been seventy nine or so. So, so yeah. So, so because it had to be because I'm I'm not out yet. So You're this 12. is twelve. I'm like 11, 12 years. Oh, old. so that's more like seventy eight. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And she's telling me like, do not be around. Like you see him riding around in these cars, these young ass guys. And, and you know, I, I see young dudes like young, riding, young. like like young, like like fourteen years old riding around because in big it, ass in the big ass motherfucking you know, in the, yeah. uh, Benz or that's so weird, you know, driving a four fifty or you know driving a driving a uh, Audi or you know, you know what I'm saying? Like 14. yeah, no. Well, our hometown, what a. One of the former hometown heroes near Detroit, Butcher Jones. I mean, as I came to, you know, know a lot of people associated with them, he was known for that. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, listen to Nate, young boy. Like, if you didn't, if it didn't have this Detroit murder street ambiance, and I just said, oh, yeah, I got a crew called <laughs> the Young Boys Inc., you would be like, what? <laughs> Al, what are you into? <laughs> yeah, it, you're right. That, that definitely would not play as well today. At all, that would be, that be that would be some. They would the internet would have a ball with that. But people are scared to say something about it. But like, yeah. So, all right. Well, we talked about the dark side of drugs, which it really mostly is, despite it what really you is, despite what you see in the rap video. Yeah, like it really, really is, and despite the way that they spin their little uh, little stories on their songs and. Make it sound. Hey, you skip straight to kilos, romantic, and there's no drug right, addicts. Right, that's right. That's we just right. on the boat. We count this money. That's it. That's it. That that it, what's crazy is, and no one tells that the the those the lyrics speak largely to that end of it, and the people who listen to it, they fill in the the blanks, the spaces in between, with their uninformed imagination. I mean, they're the user. And that's I mean, what makes them think they can do it. <laughs> yeah. It's their uninformed imagination. In their uninformed imagination, they figure out all the stuff in between the popping of the bottles and the buying of the cars and the jewelry and the screwing of the broads. You know what I mean? I mean, I t as as someone that didn't have access, like, didn't have a family but put me out, that tried, man, being fit 14 and 89 and you got an eight ball and how that turns into a million dollars. Man, it was rough. Cause first of all, when you on them treacherous neighborhoods, like everyone, your customer ain't no white person coming who you're charging double for. It's recently paroled black men with guns beating on your door, and you know they ain't got no money, and they want some crap. Like it was, you holding a gun in one end and the rocks in the other. Pick one, and you aiming a gun at. Yeah, I do not <laughs> like selling crack. Yo. That kind of a circumstance, but that's what most people, you know, unless you was plugged in. That's that's kind of crazy. I I, I always had organization, you know. Um, but you grew I up had a, at a, had a block, you know, uh, a building, mm -hmm. you know, spots. I had a lot of apartments. I had a lot of spots. A lot of places that I sold my my dope from. I sold my crack from. Um, when it 